Well, the news out of Haiti the past few weeks has not been very good. And this should come as no great surprise, as the news out of Haiti has not been very good for the past, oh, uh, 200 years or so. It is, of course, one of the most miserable and destitute places in the world. 60% of the country lives below the poverty line. Average life expectancy is under 65. I could go on listing depressing statistics, but that's probably not necessary. And yet, somehow recently, life in Haiti has gotten even worse. The situation has sunk below Haiti's already extremely low baseline. If you if you lived in the country, you would right now be pining for the old days when you were merely miserable, starving, and destitute, because that was far better than what's happening now. What's happening now is that the Haitian government, to the extent that it ever existed, has collapsed. Violent gangs have taken over the country, are prowling the streets, executing people at random. The Washington Post describes the scene, quote, on a ride through the uh, gang-controlled st streets of Haiti's capital on Friday, past an improvised barricade, the motorcycle taxi reached a crossroad. First came the smell of something burning, then the sight, a corpse, charred black, lying in the middle of the street, its bones and feet sticking out of a pile of ash. The night before, Jimmy Barsicot, a carpenter who lives nearby, heard two gunshots, peering caref carefully out his window, checking his watch. It was 8.24 p.m. He saw two men drive away leaving the body behind, not far from the university administration's office and one of Haiti's largest telecommunications companies. A few hours later, he said, the men returned and burned the remains. The streets of Port-au-Prince reek with the stench of the dead. It's a grisly new marker of the violence and dysfunction in this beleaguered Caribbean nation of 11 million people. In the absence of a functioning state, violent armed gangs have taken control of more than 80% of the capital, according to the United Nations. Gunfire crackles at all hours. Residents who dare leave their homes stumble across bodies that have been left where they fell. Port-au-Prince reached a high of 92 degrees on, on Friday. The smell of decaying corpses, human rights activists say, has driven some people from their homes. So it's a terrible picture, and it will only get worse. Uh, and it only gets worse the more you look. Consider the guy who has now seized control of the country, a notorious gang leader who goes by the moniker Barbecue, and who has launched a war against the remnants of the Haitian government while attacking prisons and freeing thousands of violent criminals in order to then recruit them into his gang. And if you're assuming that, you know, there must be some horrific reason why the Haitian warlord has been nicknamed Barbecue, uh, you're right. That's exactly what you think. Reportedly, he earned the nickname due to his habit of setting people on fire. In fact, Barbecue has been basically the de facto leader of Haiti for a while now. And this is in spite of the fact that nearly a year and a half ago, the UN leveled sanctions on Barbecue. Um, as NBC News reported at the time, it was a move that was supposed to bring about, quote, more peaceful days. Watch. Now, the United Nations Security Council also weighing in, their eyes set on Jimmy Chetissier, also known as Barbecue, over the role his G9 gang has played in a blockade of Haiti's principal fuel terminal. A move that has dried up fuel supplies as the country already suffers from a water shortage due to a cholera outbreak that's putting 1.2 million children at risk. Schools are closed, hospitals are closed, and farmers are having trouble bringing their goods to the market. The United States stepping up and targeting those in support of gangs, leading to visa sanctions on 11 people so far. And China saying it supports the UN's plan to sanction gang leaders. A move that could perhaps be a step toward more peaceful days. Hmm. Well, that didn't work out, shockingly. The sternly worded letters to the third world gang leader named Barbecue somehow didn't have any noticeable effect. Barbecue did not listen to the UN's press conferences or read their letters and say, gee, you know what? These folks are right. I should stop brutalizing innocent people. I hadn't really thought of it like that. That was not his response, which no doubt came as a shock to the UN. And now things have gotten so bad that according to reports circulating all over social media, the violent gangs terrorizing Haiti have even resorted to cannibalism. That's the thing about Haiti. If it's proven anything over the past couple of centuries, it's proven that a bad situation can always get worse, and the worst situation can get even worse than that. Unfortunately for us here in the United States, uh, Haiti is a violent, war-torn, failed state that happens to sit not very far from our own borders, which means that we have that we have already been taking in thousands of illegal Haitian migrants every year, and those numbers are only going to go up. How many of the illegal Haitian migrants are members of the brutal gangs terrorizing their country? How many are escaped prisoners? Remember, again, the, prison, the prisons have been emptied. How many of them are ending up in our country? And now we must even ask, apparently, how many are cannibals? 
These are questions that the Biden administration certainly won't concern itself with and hasn't concerned itself with. We'll be called to open our arms to the downtrodden Haitians, even if that means our arms will be chopped off and eaten for breakfast. But that's not the point we're, we're focusing on right now. As important as the point is, uh, there's, there's something else that should be mentioned. Because instead, recent events in Haiti have prompted a bit of a trip down memory lane for some conservatives on social media who have reminded us about one of the many frivolous media-invented controversies of the first Trump administration. You may recall that way back in 2018, the left became outraged and deeply offended when it was reported that President Trump had referred to Haiti as a shithole, or crap hole, as I will call it, so that we don't have to keep bleeping it. According to reports at the time, Trump uh, referred to Haiti and other third world countries as crap holes during a discussion uh, with his advisors on immigration. And it was one of the, the many times when Trump reportedly said something that every normal American either has already said or would say. And certainly no normal person, if they heard someone in their everyday life call Haiti a crap hole, would respond with shock and horror. You know, they wouldn't say, well, how could you say that about Haiti? It's a wonderful place. That's not how any normal person would respond. But the media is not comprised of normal people, which is why there was a lengthy outrage cycle, which was over the top and histrionic, even by the left's current standards. The media percentage proceeded to spend several days defending the beauty and majesty of the great nation of Haiti. There were many headlines like this from Mother Jones, quote, despite it all, Haiti is still not a crap hole. And this from the Washington Post, this is how ignorant you have to be to call Haiti a crap hole. By the way, the title of the Washington Post article that I just read at the start of the monologue is uh, Haitians shot dead in street and there's no way to, there's no one to take away the corpses. What a difference a few years make. I wonder, well, can we call Haiti a crap hole now or would that still be ignorance according to the Washington Post? When we say that something is free, it should mean precisely that. No strings attached, no hidden costs, and no fine print to decipher. When you switch to Pure Talk today, you'll get a free Samsung 5G smartphone. There is no four-line requirement, no activation fee, just a free Samsung that's built to last with a rugged screen, quick charging battery, and top-tier data, data security. Qualifying plans start at just $35 monthly for unlimited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, and a mobile hotspot. Pure Talk gives you phenomenal coverage on America's most dependable 5G network. It's the same coverage you know and love, but for half the price of the other guys. Pure Talk saves the average family almost $1,000 a year. Plus, with Pure Talk, you know you're spending your hard-earned money with a company that aligns with your values. Let Pure Talk's expert U.S. customer service team help you make the switch today. Go to puretalk.com slash Walsh to claim eligibility for your free, brand new Samsung 5G smartphone and start saving on wireless today. Again, go to puretalk.com slash Walsh to switch to my cell phone plan, Pure Talk. As you know, Easter is just around the corner. Instead of filling your child's Easter baskets with candy, consider Lux Blocks. Uh, my kids love all the different options Lux Blocks offers. They have spaceships, American flags, dinosaur cars, and everything else your kids can dream up to create. It's not just their innovative designs, but the story of their creators, Heather and Mike. They've invested their savings into this venture and their vision for a better future. Lux Blocks is made right here in America. They wanted to create something that positively empowered kids to think, create, and dream big. So whether you're looking for a gift for a child who loves to build or just a unique addition to your family game night, Lux Blocks is a perfect choice. You can check them out at luxblocks.com and use promo code MATT25 for 25% off. That's luxblocks.com. Use promo code MATT25 for 25% off. But back to 2018, where this became a subject of discussion and condemnation, uh, not just uh, uh, among the left-wing news outlets, but of course also on the late night alleged comedy shows as well. Here was, for example, Stephen Colbert registering his uh, profound objections. Listen. This afternoon, he was meeting with lawmakers to discuss immigration policy. Several of these lawmakers suggested lifting restrictions for immigrants from Haiti, El Salvador, and various African countries. Trump reportedly said, why are we having all these people from <laughs> whole countries come here? Oh, wow. Sir? They're not whole countries. For one, Donald Trump isn't their president. But, am I right about that? You got him. Yes, amen. Donald Trump isn't the president of Haiti. Instead, the de facto president of Haiti is a genocidal warlord named Barbecue. And he's so much better than Donald Trump. After all, Donald Trump will use vulgar language that hurts your feelings. Barbecue 
will hack you into pieces and throw your mangled body into a bonfire, which I'm sure we can all agree is greatly preferable to having our feelings hurt. But Colbert wasn't the only uh, late night host sticking up for Haiti. Conan O'Brien was on the case as well. Meeting last week to discuss immigration policy. You all know President Trump referred to Haiti and African countries as whole countries. And a lot of yeah. people, yeah, thought this was, it's a children's show here now. Uh, <laughs> I thought this was crude, disrespectful. Uh, a lot of people saying this is uh, borderline racist, if not racist. It's pretty racist. Want me to lose borderline? Uh, I think you can lose borderline. Mm, I'm going to keep it in for now. All right. Anyway, according to witnesses at the meeting, the president singled out the country of Haiti in particular, saying, why do we need more Haitians? Take them out. That is apparently a quote. Now, I have no idea what the president has against the people of Haiti, but if the president doesn't like them, they must be lovely people. They really, I mean, it's just... Hilarious jokes. I mean, it's such a long setup to get to the lamest punchline you can possibly imagine. But uh, lovely people, uh, absolutely lovely people, even the cannibals. Uh, they're the loveliest cannibals the world has ever seen. And, and Conan didn't stop there. He then embarked on a campaign to defend Haiti's reputation. It was a campaign that even had its own merchandise. Watch. This past Saturday, we aired our Conan in Haiti special, and uh, while we were in Haiti, we offered Haitians their own version of Make America Great Again hats. It's a hat that says Haiti is great already. We offered it to them, and they were quite happy to have it. People really like the slogan in Haiti. Uh, they like it so much so that Omaze.com is now exclusively offering this Haiti is great already t-shirt to raise money for two amazing charities that help Haiti and the Haitian people, JP, HRO, and Artists for Peace and Justice. So go to omaze.com slash Haiti to buy this great t-shirt and help out the people of Haiti. It really does make a difference. Just imagine walking down the street with no context and seeing somebody wearing that shirt. Haiti is great, al Haiti? Haiti is great already? Uh, and, you know, just as a general rule here, if you can make a difference for a whole country by selling T-shirts, that's a pretty good indication that it is not, by any reasonable metric, a great country. A second general rule is this. If a country is a failed state stricken by mass poverty and run by criminal gangs led by a guy named Barbecue, it's not a great country. It's not a great country now. It wasn't a great country back then. Despite the claims of leftists who are so determined to oppose Donald Trump on every single point that they were even baited into pretending that Haiti is a utopian paradise, uh, it is not. My dream is that if Trump wins in 2024, the first thing he'll do is declare that it's not a good idea to get into a rocket ship and fly directly into the sun. So that maybe Stephen Colbert will try to prove him wrong on that point too. Oh yeah? You think the sun isn't a good place to visit? At least Donald Trump isn't president of the sun. Colbert will declare moments before being incinerated. Now, not to belabor a point that normal people don't need explained in the first place, but no, uh, Haiti is not a great country. Um, it's an awful country, an awful place. There's nothing great about it. Like, not now, not historically, just a terrible, terrible place. Uh, the word great in this context may have some ambiguity to it. People can define great in different ways, but at the most basic level, a great country is one where its people are generally able to thrive and prosper. Great can mean more than that, but it must mean at least that. It is incoherent to describe a country where almost nobody prospers as great. It is much more coherent to describe such a country as a crap hole. Indeed, you can, you can usually detect the crap hole countries and distinguish them from the great countries. Because people from the crap hole countries are always trying to get into the great countries. It never goes the other way around. There has never been, ever, a flood of illegal immigrants from the U.S. going into Haiti. That has never happened. The flood has always gone the other way. And of course, that brings us back to the most important point in all of this. The end result, the uh, self-fulfilling prophecy, we might say, which is that America becomes less great the more it allows unchecked immigration from the very not great countries. We are not a crap hole like Haiti, but 
import enough of Haiti into this country, and we might eventually get there. Then we will be the utopia that Stephen Colbert and Conan O'Brien dream of. Then maybe they'll wear America's great already hats and walk proudly down the street in that attire before they are descended upon by the cannibal hordes and promptly consumed. Because that's what greatness is to them, apparently. Hey, YouTube, thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like access to my full show with no ads, you should go to dailywire.com and use promo code Walsh to get two months free on all annual plans. See you there.